Today I'm using this uh, Smashbox lid primer in the color light. I thought, why not use these two palettes today? The Safari and the Tropic palette together. I had too much sleep last night. Hence my weirdness. <laughs> I feel so weird because I slept like eight hours. Anyways, so this is a Tropic one. I'm sure everybody knows what they look like. And this is the Safari. And I don't know what I'm going to choose, but I'm going to choose something from these two palettes today. At least from these two palettes, maybe something else too. And I'm telling you something, if you're a little bit like me and you get a bit overwhelmed with all the colors because you like them so much and you think this can be nice, this can be nice, in the end you have like two big palettes like this and you don't know what to do with them. Unless you make it really simple, which I don't feel like doing it really simple. <laughs> I feel like complicating stuff. <laughs> well, so anyways, a little bit like that. That's what I feel like today at least. I think maybe these four here, these, with something from here. You see those six that go in here? And then something shimmery as well, of course. Let me just start and see where I will get, because I have a little bit of a guidance now, but I don't want to have too much of a guidance either. If you know what I mean? I don't want to make it too like just one row and that's it, because I feel like playing around with color today. So I'm starting with this pink here, I think, which is less pink than you, than you think. It's actually more of a peachy pink, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. Look at that. It's very light peach and not so pink. It's very pretty nonetheless, but you know, and very pigmented. All those are so pigmented. So a big fluffy brush, this one is uh, from Smashbox, one of those old ones. And um, I cleaned them with uh, Dr. Bronner's, uh, you know, soapless soap. This natural uh, soap with coconut oil and all those, and it's very nice for those, especially for those uh, natural bristles, they get so nice and soft. Like this one is years already. I have this one years already and it's still soft. And I'm pretty much sure it's because of that soap. Okay, so already here I took this a little bit darker one from here. It's just slightly darker, but it is darker. And mostly in the outer corner, a little bit more, slightly lower down maybe. maybe. Like that, but also to the inside of the eye. But mostly out here. Like in really in this area here that you will see it from here. Because everything else it's kind of covered. Let's face it, that's the way it looks on my eye. Like that. And I have a feeling that, like I said, the Smashbox primer is maybe making everything look a little bit extra dry and wrinklish, more than usual, even. Maybe take this one it's like one step further in the to the orangey side of it and i still want to use those other colors so i don't really know where it's going but let's just take some of this orange and go a little bit more like like that a little bit lower down and a little bit darker orange Maybe not so much of it, let's see. I will take some of this one here. So just here. So this more yellow color I take here in the inner part and a little bit up like that so you can actually see it when I open my eyes. I think now I'm ready for this red one here. I really wanna try that one together with these colors, I mean, of course it will work, but I don't know where we're going to go with it. So this one also the same place. This corner gets the most color like all, all the time in my eyes. I look because it's the part where you can actually see the color. So, you know, I tend to use a lot of it here. 
And let's stick down here too, on the lid a bit. Just a bit like that. It's a really pretty red, pinky red kind of thing. But of course now when it comes on these colors, it doesn't look like that anymore. It becomes a little bit more muted. Now I'm taking this color here where it's, it's like a deeper, not exactly red, that's the thing. It's like a wine red kind of thing or burgundy maybe you call it. And I'm stamping it on here in the outer corner to begin with. Because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm still I'm using the same brush for everything. Like just here a bit. What do you think? And I'm taking it inside here a little bit too. When I don't have so much on the brush anymore. And I'm trying to hold the brush also out here so it will be a bit softer approach. <laughs> Not digging it in there, you know. I should hold my side because I don't get it. You see, it skips. When I don't hold it, it skips the wrinkles and then that's what you get. All these uh, light things, you see? And I kind of forget it, like, I don't always think about that. With mats, you all, you, you see it straightly, like, yeah, you can't fool around with mats much. You have to do it properly. So I have to do it again a bit over here to fix it. So to fix the, you know, that I didn't lift the loose skin with the wrinkles, I think I would just take maybe a blend of these two because that's what I have up there. I'm just taking a blend of those two and try and fix it here a bit. Here. Ah, that should do it. Kind of stamping it in and swirling at the same time. And then I'm taking those two lighter colors here. You know, up here a bit. Just to blend it a bit better. And again, I don't hold it, you see? I have like, <laughs> come on, hold your wrinkly, wrinkly things. So under my eye here, I took just those two light colors together. Doing the same on the other eye. And then I would probably go to the red one and do the same thing under the eye, just, you know, the way I did here. And this one also, I'm like taking it around here a bit, soften up this corner here a bit. And then all the way here, kind of keeping it a bit lower down like that. This is something I never used to do. I started doing it since I started to get really heavy and wrinkly and, you know, hooded eyes. I started to take things a little bit more like here and lower down. Just so you will actually see something, especially with the bangs maybe. That you will actually see something because usually the bangs go until here. So what do you see? You see the, the eyeball on the lower lid. <laughs> That's kind of what you see. Red one. This brush should have been a bit smaller maybe for this part of the eye since there's not a lot of place here. But I'm trying to do it anyways. If I need to, I will just clean up a bit. So here where there is a kind of a dip again, I'm holding it a tiny bit out like that. And just wiggling like in the same area just to fill it up with color because I don't know, for some reason it seems to go out from this place. It's just disappearing. Also because this eye especially, I, I tend to water a little bit, but only this eye. So I always have some dirt under this eye if I don't check it, you know, and take it out like uh, in the end of the day, I will have some mascara or something over there. Some kind of thing. And this whole place here seemed to be a bit without anything. So it means that it, I don't even notice it. Like, it just happens. Ah, I used, I forgot that I used the darker color from here too. That's why I don't get, uh, you know, the payoff. So I'm taking this one now down here. Stamping that one in there too, just in the beginning. And now I understand where the color was from that looked like that. How can I forget that so fast? Hmm. Well, 
This is a really, really nice color. In a way, I want to use some black with it because black is always good. Black is always nice to have a little bit. I probably should. Instead of taking anything else from here because it will just make it muddy looking. I think because all these have some, these have some gray in it. You know, it's much a, a much grayer color than this one. So I think it's a better choice not to use any of those anymore. Now I think for a eyelid color, I will use this copper from uh, Boastein. It's a really pretty, like sunset copper like that. I used to blend this one to mix it with a, a red one that looks the same, but just red, like a cranberry one. It's also very pretty to blend that together. But I will see if this one is enough now then, just for here. And I better hold this to get it all over now, because you see I skip things. And then it just, oh yeah, this is a really pretty copper. Like that. And it's kind of a satin, satin with some, you know, something, something. I won't take it all the way. I kind of want to have it here in the middle and take it up a bit. And blend it slightly with all these because it's, since it's a satin, you can kind of play around with it a bit more. I will even take one of these brushes that I used before, take some of this copper. See that I don't have too much. And just go around here a little bit with it. A little bit more maybe. That off too much. Like to have it all the way up, but strong is here and then just a tiny bit up there. Like that. I have to say these kind of satin colors are so good for softening up all these wrinkles here in a way. They just, if it's not so matte, it looks less dry. So that's what I tend to do with those. Okay, so smaller brush, of course. And I'm taking this mint from here. The way I like it because it's cool toned and everything else is so warm. I used again this Bourjois co-liner in Black is Black or Ultra Black. So I had to go and empty the card and in the same time I brought the nail polishes that I have on. I have three nail polishes on my fingers as you can see and it's not new. It's starting to be like time to actually take it off. But I really like those together. So I will just, you know, why not show you? Maybe somebody else wants to do like this. Um, they all OPI and this is Warm Me Up, the darkest chocolatey. Not actually chocolate, it's kind of grayish brown but you know it's a really shiny one with some shimmer and then this this one here has some golden see like this it shifts to this kind of actually it reminds me of pat mcgrath one of those glitter shadows it has the same kind of green shift to it green golden shift to it in a gray base so it's really pretty I can never hide up. That's that one. And the last one is this really pretty mint, like that. And it is gelato on my mind. Mint with some blue in it, maybe. I don't know, yeah, I think so. Now, I thought I would try two different things um, as a liquid highlight today. Okay, it's Violet FX from MAC. And the other one is this Sculpt Light, strobing, illuminating highlighter from Bourjois. No, go on nicely. Don't play around with me. Especially not on Estee Lauder Double Wear. It seems to take it away. That's not funny. That's not even funny, like. Don't take it away. I'm being so light with it. And the other one on the other side. I'm, I'm telling you already now that I like this one much better. Again, this opening is a little bit bigger than the Estee Lauder, but still I'm doing the same thing. I'm just putting it straightly on here, I think. 
like that because I know this one is working pretty well like this. Look at that. I mean, this one is just really pretty. I will just put it over this. Look at this. This is like nothing. Nothingy, nothingy. Plus, it doesn't go on as nicely as the MAC one. Okay. Now, I need something under the eye. Where did I put it here? I'm going to use this Smashbox uh, Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. That's what they call it. But it's pretty nice. Okay. So this under eye concealer is from Maybelline. It's one of those awful ones with the sponge tip on it. So I just broke two of them and I put them in here. Because that's the way I like it. And yeah, so that's the way I did it. So I'm just using a concealer brush. And the color is so nice. It's the lightest color they have. And I really like it. And I also like the way, the way this um, concealer is on my skin. But I do set it a little bit usually, but not too much. A little bit uh, shimmery powder. You don't really see this shimmer, I don't think so. But this is the Shiseido one, loose powder. And it does have a little bit of a shimmer thing going I believe but really it's not a lot so I'm just putting some in the lid and I will use this Smashbox very fluffy brush so you don't get so much on there maybe it's rather going all over the room <laughs> and you better not breathe when you do this I thought to start on the cheeks with this um, MAC Coloring Golden Rinse. It's an extra dimension bronzing powder. It's the one that looks like that. It's a really pretty one. Like, I really like this one. It's like that kind of soft sheen, you know, but really light. Okay, I'm going over this pink highlight here because I think I've got too pink here. I don't know if I powdered it enough for this, again, for this foundation. I'm telling you. I should have taken a softer brush maybe for this. Maybe I should have taken a softer brush for it. So I'm going in pretty strongly with this one because I have a feeling that it's going to work really well with this. That's the golden rings and I really packed it on because I think without and I did disturb the foundation or it's the bourgeois that makes it look funny here oh that's what it is look at that here it looks pretty smooth and here there's some funny things going on it must be from the bourgeois highlighting product when I came to this part I had this uh, blush in my mind already from Guerlain it's a uh, red hot Oh, hot red, hot red. It's really, really pretty with this kind of looks. Now I will use the same brush that I used for the um, bronzer and I will mix them together. But I'm doing it like this, you know. Now, should I use the MAC Snow Flushed for topper, highlighter? This one is so freaking gorgeous, but kind of strong also. But it really goes with this kind of, you know, this is the pink, you know, that you can see like that. I really want to try it. So I will just do it. But maybe with a wispier kind of brush, huh? Okay, so there it is now with all its shimmer and stuff, you know. Smaller brush. Same thing. Yeah, it has to be here because, hey, if I got this far, it has to have something like that. And now I kind of wanted to do it here too, but of course I have the green over there, so that's going to have to stay. I'm going to try again something that I used to do a lot. I'm taking this uh, Shiseido in white. It's also a highlighter. And now I will take a brush like this for highlight and I will take this white almost matte. It's like so matte that I don't think compared to this one, it's matte. 
So I will just try and make it a little bit lighter right here because it got all over a bit. And make it a bit lighter and, you know, come in here a bit like that. Because, I don't know, this snow flashed. It's much nicer on the eye itself, I think. And I kind of forgot how strong it is. It's not like it's such a long time since I used it. But anyway, it's like so overpowering. It's unbelievable. I'm taking this white one a little bit in here too. Because it's just like that, you know. It's just a tiny, tiny bit. This is a really, really nice product. This one for light skin. And then there's a more of a beige yellow for a bit deeper skin tones. Now I thought to use this uh, nude medium from Smashbox. So I'm taking some of the same kind of, this one also was a gift of purchase, it was kind of in a bundle thing. This is Figgy. The colors are nice in those, but I'm telling you these self-sharpening ones aren't worth it. Now I'm pretty sure again this uh, cognac from Smashbox will be really nice. I would just maybe use the brush that I used already. Yeah. It's nice, but it's nice to have the red under a bit. I'm going to use one of these meteorites from uh, Gelna. Uh, shake it up a bit. And it does have this, uh, you know, foamy thing that holds things in place. And it's excellent when you shake it a bit, then it really stays over there, but it still loosens the pearls a bit so you actually get some out from there. So this one has these kind of colors and it was a limited edition from last summer maybe but oh, there's nothing like this. It's like a powdery violet blossom smell. It's so pretty but the fun thing is that it disappears after a while on the skin. It's not like you're walking around with this in your face all the time like you can feel it or something. I'm using a very soft brush so I won't get too much from it. I hope you have a really good day and that you will and you still enjoy your colors, of course. So yeah, hope to see you next time.